Welcome to Hearthside. My name is Michelle. I am the writer of this blog and I've been working on converting a bunch of my old entries into YouTube videos just to make them a little bit more accessible to people. Um, this is take two on the blog entry entitled Housewide Interactions and shockingly this one has been fairly popular. Um, lots of people coming in off of Google mostly and I guess like there's not a lot online written about housewife, so that's probably the draw. There are lots of other sources and I will even suggest one. I should have grabbed that book. I will be right back. All right, so this is probably the best book that you can find on this topic, uh, The Tradition of Household Spirits by Claude Le Coteau. I use quite a few other sources, I believe, for this blog. It's been a while. Um, but definitely I was looking at things that had been written online already. And, like, I have some access to some academic articles and stuff as well. Um, but yeah, this is really a very, very basic post. I didn't even really go into nearly as much detail as in the book. Um, that I just showed you. And where I was coming from was just I was seeing a lot of people online talking about the house whites and treating them with a sense that they were kind of trivial, um, not to be taken seriously. And you don't want to do that, like you don't want to make your house white angry with you. It will not be a good time for you. Like, and traditionally whites and house whites are no exception. They get offended fairly easily. So you don't want to be doing that. You want to be building relation with them so that you can have a happy home. They're going to affect the way that your home feels. Um, they're going to affect how smoothly things go in your home. Um, traditionally, they would help with some chores, maybe. Help with the garden, keep things running smoothly. As long as you're keeping up that gifting cycle with them. So... If we're looking at names that were used other than the word housewife, which is a modern English heathen word, I would say. But there's other words in English for them. Um, the most commonly known one for English and Scottish speakers would probably be the brownie. Um, but also in England, they've been referred to as the hob or hobgoblins. In Germany, they've been referred to as kobold, and Slavic people would call them the domovoi. In Norway and Denmark, the word nice is most common, and in Sweden, tomte. And this was a new one that I hadn't seen until I was researching for this blog, but tontu in Finnish, which hopefully I'm pronouncing right since I'm not familiar with Finnish. Um, in Anglo-Saxon, they're called kofgodas. And in Old Norse, of course, the word is husvetir, which translates to house white, as we modern heathens usually refer to them. Um, so, yeah, they would help around the house. And when I say they help around the house, the idea of the house historically was the house and the surrounding work to land, basically. Um, so not necessarily like fields if you were a farmer, but like the direct area where you would have your outbuildings, your stables, your barns, your chicken coops, um, any of that. And then like the garden area, like the idea of 
those things that exist within the hedge, I would say. That would be considered the house, and that would be the purview of your house white or house whites, because historically there would be potentially more than one. Um, just depending on the size of where you were living and the lack of the family and whatever else. Um, now, as long as these the, these house gods are being treated well and fairly and politely, then everything goes well for the family. But if you're being rude, if you insult them, they might leave or they might cause mischief or cause the luck of the family to turn. So the main way that you're usually interacting with them would be gifting them and usually you would be gifting them food. Um, the most common offerings to be giving them are carbs like um, bread or porridge or dairy products, whether that's cream or butter, milk, any of those sorts of things. Another common offering was ale or beer. And within some families in some regions, it was common to be leaving a portion of the family's dinner for the housewife. Um, so yeah, there's a couple different ways you can do it, whatever makes sense to you. These spirits, they're not only looking after your house, helping make sure everything runs smoothly there, but also they might help you to have a good harvest if you have a garden or if you have a small farm, um, keeping animals safe that are on your property. Um, but you don't want to disrespect them and something that you might be familiar with if you've read say Harry Potter or whatever is the idea of giving in the Harry Potter book it was the uh, house elves clothes and in most cases in that book other than Dobby the house elves didn't take very kindly to that and the same is true of house whites if you give them clothes that would be seen as insulting and that could cause them to leave um, but unless you're having like huge troubles with your house white you don't want them to leave because it's going to cause the luck of your household to diminish basically so you have to have a pretty serious reason why you would want to insult a white and make it leave before you would ever consider that. Um, but they also can r take offense to words that you might say against them or something in their presence. Um, and like the way I see it, they're in the house. You don't know where they're present. Just assume that they're listening and you don't want to insult them. It will not go well. They could cause mischief, they could make crops fail, they could make food spoil, they could cause accidents, um, they could cause things to go missing. That's fairly common, I think. Um, even in when I've talked to modern people about housewives, things going missing out of mischief is a fairly common occurrence and it might not be that the house white was slighted they might just have a mischief streak or it could be maybe you forgot to clean something they might consider that you're not holding up your end of the bargain you forgot to do the dishes this morning you forgot to put away the laundry you forgot to whatever task it might be that they are like hey you're not holding up your end of the bargains. I'm going to misplace your keys or something to that effect. Um, my own practice with my housewife, I don't want to talk about it too much. I consider that fairly personal, but my housewife does like to make himself known. And... He's especially interested when I'm baking. 
Um, he makes it known that he is interested in what I'm baking and would like some by usually causing some small thing to move around or make a loud noise that gets my attention. Um, he's also not always happy if we forget to clean something up and there have been incidents where wallets and keys have gone missing. Um, that's fairly common. Um, I find that they can usually be resolved just by talking with the housewife directly, maybe leaving them an offering, but just talking to them and be like, hey, do you know where my keys went? And usually that causes keys to appear or whatever has gone missing. Um, but modern times, a lot of people aren't even aware that they have a house white. Um, even heathens, there's a lot of people who don't realize that there are house whites or don't really pay them much attention. And the house whites, I don't think, think that inattention is insulting necessarily but the relationship that you have with them is going to be directly proportional to what type of relationship you try to build. So if you're ignoring them, they're probably not going to help out with things around the house. Um, your luck's just going to be like, eh, in regards to the house. I mean, there's other things that affect your worth and affect your luck beyond your home environment, but like they're affecting the house like how often it needs repairs or if things break or if people get sick more often potentially or just like the tension that's in the environment when there's people living together like they can affect all of that so even though it's not imperative necessarily that you pay a ton of attention to them and they're not going to be insulted by that per se, you will see your house environment improve drastically when you interact with them. Um, it's really interesting to see how they're portrayed in different fairy tales in modern pop culture, the ideas of fairies and elves have sort of got all mixed together and people don't really have a concept of what a housewife is. Like, my husband isn't a heathen and he wasn't familiar with the concept of a housewife before he knew me. And it's something that whenever he's trying to describe heathenry to someone knew that he th he thinks it's fascinating. He likes to bring it up right away with them. I always think it's kind of a waste of his time to bring it up before like maybe talking about ancestor veneration or something that is easier for people to relate to because it just sort of confuses them and they don't know what to say and they don't know where to go with that conversation. But... The, there's not a lot of understanding of that sort of practice in modern times. Um, our ideas of like what a house elf are, like from the elf and the shoemaker or from Harry Potter, like that's not a lot to go on. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend this book that I was showing you. Um, it's got some really interesting things. Um, it's hard to get through some parts of it because like they break down the house by like each part of the house and it, it's gonna take a while but there's valuable information in there and you're not gonna find most of that online. So if that's something that interests you definitely check out that book. I will drop it in the description along with all of my sources for this material. Alright, I hope you enjoyed and 
thank you so much for taking the time. You have a great day.